is my uh, slide visible yes yes sir. yes you all can hello yes yes, yes. Thank, you. thank you yes sir so at the outset uh, i'd like to thank uh, uh, dr manoj dr ameya professor prema and rest of the organizing team for this opportunity uh, i next i just uh, catch up some time i will do only for 10 to 11 minutes because uh, some basics have been covered. So I'll start with the case presentation. So this uh, 61 year old lady, typical uh, type two diabetes for many years, postmenopausal, earlier fragility fracture has got complications, uncontrolled diabetes, maximum OHA, she has declined insulin. So, and she has a thin BMI and uh, she has all the complications for fall as well as fracture. This is the second case, 59 year old lady, menopause at 48 years, diabetes for many years, BMI is okay. Some complications are there. Once again, glycemic control, optimal, mild vitamin D deficiency. She was admitted in an orthopedic ward for a hip fracture and she was called she, uh, the consult was sent to us for management of diabetes as well as medical management of left hip fracture. Now, this is the x-ray, you know, it's obvious. And this patient had come earlier to internal medicine department and decks are done, which showed not osteoporosis, it was osteopenic. That is minus 1.2 at lumbar spine, as well as in the femoral neck or total hip. It was so the patient was given only calcium and vitamin D. Patient was not evaluated any further. So if you look at the life expectancy, it is increasing in India. And this is a study from Chandigarh, my friend, Dr. Sanjay, about uh, one third of osteoporosis, especially with diabetes. This is another study from Jaipur, which is once again uh, highlighting that uh, Otherwise, healthy individuals type 2 diabetes have osteoporosis. This is one of the beautiful study reporting fractures published last year by Dr. Amrish Mittal and group. That is higher proportion of fractures in diabetes compared to non-diabetes. And this is, we all know, this is an old study, definite increase in fracture risk and mortality from a nurse's cell study. And this is a recent study Diabetic subjects on insulin with the poor control have a poor outcome and they require more hospital readmission following a hip fracture. Large number, this is from Taiwan. So we know that it is multifactorial risk for fall and risk for, for fragility. Medications like pyoglitazone, we all know from medical school. There is a recent meta-analysis. There was a concern about SGLT2 inhibitor and fracture risk. This is a recent meta-analysis which said there is no increased fracture risk associated with SGLT2 inhibitor. So far, there have been three. One was inconclusive. One said fracture risk was there. And this is a recent one says there is no increased risk of fracture risk. Coming back to the case, that uh, second case who had a hip fracture and uh, this is the BMD had spine as well as hip, did not reveal osteoporosis. What we did in this patient, we did a VFA, vertebral fracture assessment. Patient had vertebral fracture. One fracture was there at least, which was not picked up by the BMD. We all know type 2 diabetes, the BMD will be falsely high. And we also did a TBS in this patient the TBS, that is the microarchitectural deterioration, which is which was 1.158, less than 1.2. If you take it as a cut off, this patient had microarchitectural deterioration, despite BMD showing non-osteoporotic range. We also looked at hip geometry on the non-involved hip, that was showing a high bucklic ratio of 14, and. This is evident also in a small study we did in type 1 diabetes. We showed a low trabecular microarchitecture in type 1 diabetes when compared to controls. 
This is a study which we published last month, 200 postmenopausal women and controlled subjects without diabetes. And we found that the BMB was significantly higher in subjects with diabetes, reported lower prevalence of osteoporosis in subjects with diabetes. We may get deceived if you look at only BMD. Whereas when we looked at the trabecular bone score, 51% half of them had a significantly low trabecular bone score. So this was a paradox. When we looked at the hip geometry, many parameters were significantly deranged. Vertebral fractures were one third of them had and BTM was significantly low in diabetic subjects as recorded in previous studies. Now, this is the hip geometry. We can find the buckling ratio was significantly lower, high, significantly higher. The more the buckling ratio, more risk for hip fracture. It was higher in cases compared to controls. Dr. Mittal talked about FRACS. This is a second study which we have submitted for uh, uh, to our case for uh, utility of FRACS in diabetes, where we replaced rheumatoid arthritis as diabetes present. As indicated, we have done in 200 subjects. When you include BMD, what is happening is because the BMD is high in these subjects, without BMD and with BMD, the risk comes down with BMD. When you incorporate frag, uh, TBS or we say diabetes present in the place of rheumatoid arthritis, the risk is getting uh, carried on. This is same for major osteoporotic fracture as well as hip fracture. The moment we add BMD without TBS and without correcting for diabetes, the risk is falsely low. We have to be aware when we use FRAX in subjects with diabetes. In subjects with vertebral fractures, without vertebral fractures, we find we had to incorporate diabetes replacing rheumatoid arthritis and TBS to see significant risk factor difference. When you look at the evaluation, we learned that basically at least calcium and phosphorus and albumin and creatinine, all the other tests, if facilities are available, of course, we will assess renal as well as glycemic control. <laughs> Radiology, if many cases of diabetes, preferably to have an X-ray lateral spine. In addition to DEXA, if the VFA is available in the DEXA, please do it. We may miss a fracture. If the trabecular bone score is available, please do it. And hip geometry is an experimental tool. We can use it if the recent models have that HSA to see how is the various parameters of the hip geometry. We have to be aware that in addition to the general measures, calcium and vitamin D. Recently also we looked at various uh, cholecalciferol brands. Many brands, they mentioned 60,000. They are not containing 60,000. This is in concurrence with the study published from All Day Institute by Dr. Rajesh Gadgavar. So we have to be aware what brand to use. And this was nicely covered by Dr. Mittal. The two group of drugs, bisphosphonates and Denisumab as an anti-resorptive and teriparatide as an anabolic. The management remains the same. Now, in Indian, this is our study, which is the only study which looked at soldonic acid in many of the subjects were having diabetes. It worked well with relation to uh, BMD, as well as trabecular bone score, as well as hip geometry. So all these bisphosphonates work well in our setting. So in diabetic subjects, in addition to making fall prevention measure, calcium and cholecalciferol bisphosphonate. And this is a study of 43 subjects with on teriparatide. Once again, it's working well. And this good in a setting where we can use anabolic agent. So I'd like to conclude they're twins. Diabetes and osteoporosis are twins. Glycemic control is quite essential. Don't get fooled by looking at a normal or osteopenic BMD in diabetes. If facilities are available, you have to look for TBS, VFA, and hip geometry. Treatment is cost-effective. 
bisphosphonates and anabolics have a significant fracture reduction. Thank you very much.